In this unit of our InDesign CS6 course, we'll take that InDesign template that we built for our sample total training catalog and we'll actually turn it into an InDesign document that contains the text for a cross-section of our Adobe classes. I'm going to start by selecting the body copy paragraph style so that I have a default style to work with. And then I'm going to close this file. Now because I made a change to that, we're going to let it save changes. So we have it set up exactly the way we'd like it to be. So I'm going to say save. And when I do, it's going to bring us back into our welcome screen. I'm going to click on the open button. And when I do, it's going to allow me to navigate my way to chapter 7 of my InDesign CS6 Essentials course file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on randy7.indt. And it's actually going to create a brand new document named Untitled and whatever the sequence is that we're working with. I'm going to go here and I'm going to change to page 2. We're going to save page 1 for each of our books to use it to actually create a table of contents for each section of our catalog. So I'm going to go to the Pages panel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that A Master Name. That selects both of them. And I'm going to drag that down below so I get pages 2 and 3. I've got page 2 set right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to place the text that I'm going to use for this Adobe Classes section of the catalog. I'm going to go to the File pull down menu and I'm going to select Place. The keyboard shortcut for that is Command-D. If you're working on a Windows PC, that keyboard shortcut would be Control-D. So I'm going to double click on that. And when I do, that's going to open up my place dialog box. We want to place text in here that's called adobecourses.rtf. So I'm going to click on that once and I'm just for a bit going to click on the show import options to show what's available. I'm going to open that. And when I do, it allows me to see all the options that are available for setting that type. We're going to live with whatever these defaults are and say OK. And when we do, I'll get a place gun that shows the text that we have for our course. Don't worry if you get a missing font warning. We'll be formatting the text momentarily. Now, I can place these page by page as we talked about before to do that manually. I'm going to use the long documentation functions to auto flow this text and actually fill in the pages on the fly. So I'm going to do that by moving my cursor to the upper left hand corner of page 2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the shift key. When I do that with my place gun, you'll see I get these little squiggly lines that show going up and down with an arrow. That lets me know that I'm available for the auto flow function. When I click the mouse button, it's going to fill up page 2 and 3. And if there's more text, it will create page 4 and 5 and fill those up too. 6 and 7, so on down the line. So I'm going to click the mouse button right here. And when I do, you'll see that pages 2 and 3 are created. If I go to my Pages panel, I'll also see that pages 4 and 5 are, 6 and 7, and 8 and 9 are created. So we actually have these pages built in for what we're working with all of the various course descriptions for our total training course catalog. I'm going to get my type tool and it doesn't matter where, I'm just going to click anywhere inside of that type. Whenever you're formatting type, you want to use whatever style you're going to set most of that type in. In our case, as we're talking about paragraph styles, that would be body copy. Now you'll see that's not the style that's selected. We have whatever font was used and settings for whenever this text was created in the word processing program. So I'm going to go Command A on the Mac, Control A if I'm on a Windows PC. And I'm going to take all that type and I'm going to make it body copy. So it actually changes the layout of the type that we're working with. Now if I go over here to my Pages panel once again, what I'll see is that that type only takes up a little bit up to page 7. It doesn't, however, get rid of the type or the text frames that were set for page 8 and 9. 
Let's go back to page two. And I'm going to show how well that header style we created in the previous unit of this InDesign CS course is going to work for us and make our layout work much easier. So with my type tool selected, I'm going to go back to Paragraph Guides, and I'm going to click in here where it says Adobe Acrobat 10 Pro Essentials. And I'm going to make that a header style. Now, as you do that, you'll see that that text shows just like so. It puts it at the top. It's centered. That type is 14 points. Arial bold italic on 14 point lighting. So everything that we built into that style is there. I'm going to go down to the next course description. This one right here that says Adobe Illustrator CS5 Essentials. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to make that the header style as well. And when I do, you'll see that it automatically skips to the next page of my InDesign document. Remember, when we created that header style, when we went to the Keep Options and said, automatically move that down to the next page, that's exactly what it's going to do. I'm going to go now to Adobe Creative Suite 5 Design Workflow, click in there and make that the header style. And when I do, you'll see that it automatically bounces down to page 4, or that second two-page spread that we have. Let me move this down just a little bit further. I'm going to click in Dreamweaver. Do the same thing. I'm going to make it a header. Moves to page 5. I'm going to go to Encore. Make it a header. It bounces it to the page below. The next course is Adobe Flash Catalyst CS5 Essentials. I'm going to click in there. Make it a header. That skips to 7. Going to do the same thing with Flash Catalyst Select Topics. Make it a header. That moves to 8. Do the same thing for Flash CS5 Professional Essentials. And you see, we got a lot of extra pages here. So this isn't all going to fit on nine pages. After I create the header to move that to page nine, and then I create the header style in Adobe Fireworks CS5, you'll see all the text disappears. But there's a little red box down to the right. And what that does, it lets me know that there's more text here then there are pages to show. So I'm going to go back to my Pages panel. I'm going to drag down a two-page spread after 8 and 9. Go back to page 9. Take my selection cursor. And click to pick up the place gun once again. I'm going to go to page 10. Hold the Shift key down. And do this again. Now I'm back to formatting the paragraph style. So I'm going to click here, go in InDesign CS5 Essentials, make that a header. Do the same thing with CS5 Interactivity, make that a header. Go to Premiere Pro, do the same thing. Go to Photoshop, CS5.5 Essentials, do it one more time. Now you'll see that I've got to the end of all my pages again. So as I keep doing this, I'm going to have to go through this drill time and time again. There is a faster way, and I'm going to show that to you now. I'm going to go grab the A Master and put two more pages down below. Go back to page 13. Get my selection tool. Click inside the plus and pick up the place gun. I'm going to go to page 14. Hold down my shift key and place all the rest of them. And as I do that, what you'll see is that it actually creates this all the rest of the way down. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards from the front. So I'm going to go to page 16, double click, and I'll see there's really nothing there. I just got probably a couple of extra returns. We'll check that later in this chapter of our InDesign CS6 course. I'm going to go to page 15, Get my type tool, work from back to front. So I'm going to take Captivate 4 Essentials. I'm going to make that the header style. I'm going to go to Sound Booth CS5. Going to make that the header style. Going to go here to Photoshop CS5 Advanced. Going to make that the header style. 
Now, in this case, once again, I'll see that I have a little plus afterwards. But I know I only have one more article to do to fill this in. So I'm going to go back to my Pages panel. I'm going to drag a right side page to the right of 16 and get 17. I'm going to get my selection tool and pick up that place gun one last time. Click, and that's the last column. Now, if I'd have done that this way as we were working all the way through, I would have only had to go through this process once. So after the first time you use up all your pages, if you find out you're creating extra page content from your InDesign document, place it all and work from back to front. When you do that, you'll only have to do that clicking one more time to build this layout instead of the multiple times that I had to do right here. And we're going to do one more thing. We're going to go to the Master Pages and we're going to place an orange triangle right down here to the lower right of the page. This is a little signature I'm going to use to let me know what version of the document I'm working on. So with that said, I'm just going to get my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a small rectangle down and to the right. I'm going to go to my color panel and I'm going to take that fill and I'm going to change that fill from none to like a really nice warm red. So I'm going to make that say 100% yellow and like 80% magenta. That gives me an orange rectangle down here to the lower right of the master page. I'm going to get my direct selection tool and click on the upper left hand corner. To select that anchor point. When I delete that, it's going to turn my rectangle into a right angle triangle, just like so. We're going to save our InDesign document now so we can work with it. And this little piece that we've put here is a little cue for me to know that when I'm doing something, I'm maintaining version control and I'm working on whatever icon shows here as the latest version of that document. We're going to go File, Save As, and in this case what we're going to do is we're going to save this as your first name and the number 7, so it would be Randy7, as I've got right here, and we're going to save that as an InDesign CS6 document. When I save that here, it'll show as Randy7.indd, and we're ready to continue working, building this section of our total training catalog.